This is Will Davis with the Monroe County Reporter. Here are some of the top stories in this week's newspaper. City police and county deputies were called to the former Monroe Academy on Tuesday after a man was seen naked making obscene gestures right near the Monroe County Middle School football team. It happened after the 4 o'clock hour and police found Jay Green. He's 26 years old, formerly of Forsyth. Someone had dropped him there at the former Monroe Academy and he had taken off his clothes and was slapping himself on the rear end and putting his hand in his rear end. City officers were able to arrest him. They say he was probably on drugs. He'll face indecent exposure and other charges. See more details in this week's Reporter. Boomtown. That's what they may call Forsyth and Monroe County now. The county setting a new record for new homes in the month of July with 66 new homes permitted. Many of them come in in the new uh, Bolingbroke Manor subdivision off Sanders Road. Also the new Juliet Crossing neighborhood, as well as the Manor at Montpelier neighborhood in the city. Find out more details of the big construction boom in this week's newspaper. Hi, I'm Terry Johnson. I write Monroe Outdoors for The Reporter. This week we're going to be talking about squirrel hunting. Now you might think that is something strange to be talking about at this time of the year, but believe it or not, the 2021-22 hunting seasons for the state of Georgia actually begin this month with the opening of the squirrel season. If you're a squirrel hunter, you have a hard time hunting squirrels during the summer because of many things. One thing you've got to compete with a lot of insects, anything that bites and scratches or anything of that nature, they're going to be out there. Also, if you're a squirrel hunter, if you look up into the foliage of a tree, you're going to find that squirrels are going to be more difficult to hunt because of the foliage at this time than they are at any other time of the year. Now, if I was a squirrel hunter and I was going to go out uh, squirrel hunting in the near future, I would look for a white oak stand. If you find leaves that look like this, you are in squirrel country. They love the acorns, as do white-tailed deer and a lot of other things. Also, you're going to find in this week's column that I'll be talking about the dangers of eating one part of the squirrel. So, if you want to find out what not to eat on a squirrel, what the seasons are, when they begin, read this week's Reporter. Well, we hear from our readers how popular the Monroe County Reporter is, but you don't have to just find it in a store or get it and wait for your mail to come. You can now read it online as well at mymcr.net with a subscription to our e-edition. To the Monroe County Reporter, read all your favorite news and sports and what's going on in Monroe County online, where you are on your phone or on your computer. Call 994-2358 to sign up today to your subscription. Well, the Forsyth City Hall is finally nearing completion. It was scheduled to be done by August 6th this week. It may be a little later than that. There's a few more details to mop up, but they have mostly finished the building and the City Council now expects to hold their first meeting there on September 7th. They will dedicate the building, have an open house in conjunction with the Bicentennial Celebration on September 25th. Find out more details in this week's Reporter. I'm Seth Berkebaum. This is the Monroe County Reporter Incidents of the Week. A man dove out of a window at a home on Pioneer Trail when deputies answered a call to a domestic dispute on July 21st. Deputies tried to get someone to come to the door but but got no response. Deputy Philip Billingsley could see a man pacing back and forth through the window and he and Corporal Nicholas Ortiz asked him several times to open the door but he continued to ignore them. Ortiz then went around to the back of the house 
And while knocking on the front door, the deputies heard glass break and Ortiz saw the man dive through the window and run off into the woods dressed in nothing but black shorts with no shoes or shirt. Deputies found a woman hiding in the back room holding her one-year-old daughter. When asked why she didn't answer the door, she replied that she didn't want to. When asked who jumped out the window, she said it was her boyfriend but wasn't sure why he ran. Ortiz asked her if she had been using drugs and she answered yes, meth a few days ago. Billingsley noticed the air conditioner was set at 62 degrees and told the woman to put a blanket or some clothes on the baby since it was so cold in the house. The deputy also noticed the baby looked like she needed a bath. Billingsley contacted Monroe County Child Services who said that they would investigate. Babies crying in a loud argument in a hotel room prompted a call to police by the desk manager of the La Quinta Inn on Russell Parkway on July 30th. A mother of six ended up in the Monroe County Jail. The manager told Officer Richard Maddox, who said a couple had been in one of their rooms and they had been arguing and babies had been crying all morning. The male occupant of the room then exited the elevator and was identified. He told Maddox he and his wife had been staying at the hotel for the last six days and there was a total of six children in the room, ranging from ages 1 to 11. He said the children had been loud that morning because he and his wife were trying to pack so that they could check out. They had tried to quiet the children, but it had been impossible. Corporal Kimberly Barnett spoke with the woman in the room and saw the children had appeared to be well taken care of with no visible marks. The corporal then ran the woman's ID and learned that she had two active warrants out of Spalding County. She was arrested in front of her children and taken to jail. Barnett waited while the man packed and loaded his car. One of his family members arrived to assist with the children. Hello, this is Steve Reese with the Monroe County Reporter's Chase of the Week. A Stone Mountain man, Safey Edwards, was on a fast Kawasaki traveling northbound on I-75 with a large group of bikers when Corporal Thomas Haskins clocked them near Rumble Road doing over 100 miles per hour. Of course, Haskins turned on the blue lights and gave chase. Most of the bikers slowed and pulled over on the shoulder, but Edwards and two other riders accelerated to over 140 miles per hour. The corporal caught up with them just past Highway 18 and pulled up alongside Edwards, who tried to change lanes but clipped the rear end of Haskins' patrol car. Edwards lost control of the motorcycle and slid to the edge of the pavement. He then immediately jumped up and grabbed the center barrier. Haskins pulled his pistol and it was all over. He was taken to the hospital to have ointment applied to a severe case of road rash. He was then transferred to the Monroe County Jail. number one real estate company, The Brokery, now offers the full gamut of real estate services. The Brokery has long been a top seller and lister of homes, land, and real estate, and now they can do it all, no matter what you need. Renovations to prepare for a sale, the best mortgage rates from Prime Point Mortgage, listing and brokerage services to move property, all under one roof. From the real estate professionals at The Brokery, go to their website or find them right here at Forsyth on 30 East Johnston Street. Hey y'all, it's Tammy Raffersader with the Monroe County Reporter. Welcome to this week's Classifieds. This week we've added a new automobile for sale. It's a 2007 Nissan Titan King Cab pickup truck. It's a 5.6 liter V8 engine. The seller is asking $5,600 or best offer. Call 478-994-4090 for more information. There's also a new motorcycle this week. It's a 1982 Yamaha 750 with only 2,600 miles. It's been garage kept in storage for 15 years and everything has been inspected and is in good condition. 3,495. Call Darcy at 478-394-5903. We've also got a like new power lift chair. It cost over $1,000 new. 
is selling for $500. Call Joe Woody at 478-391-3136. If you love to find bargain treasures, there's two yard sales in this week's Reporter. First is a multi-family yard sale on Saturday, August the 7th at 459 West Johnson Street starting at 8 a.m. They say there's something for everyone. The second one is a huge estate sale to happen on Friday, August the 13th through Sunday, August the 15th. This one has men's formal wear, furniture, yard tools, vinyl records, and shoes. Lots of other stuff too. Email questions about the sale to Stacy at sln2000 at gmail.com. And don't forget about the upcoming job fair hosted by the Monroe County Sheriff's Office. It's next Tuesday, August 10th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Monroe County Conference Center, located at 475 Holiday Circle in Forsyth. Dress for success and bring several copies of your resume. Employers can still register for the event by calling 478-994-7048. Thanks for reading. Y'all have a fantastic week. What? Did you see this? A woman had a snake in her car. That's crazy. I'm going to have to subscribe to this reporter. It's only $40 a year. Hey, this is Diane Gladwell reporting for the Monroe County Reporter. Uh, this week we have a story on Mayma McCollop has done it again. She uh, won, uh, she's a swimmer and she's a freshman at Mary Persons and she won state um, for Georgia in the 50 meter freestyle a couple of weeks ago. And then this past weekend, she represented Georgia at the zones and in swimming zones means there are four zones in the United States. And so she competed against swimmers from about six other states and she finished first again in the 50 meter and also finished second in the 100 meter freestyle and also uh, finished first in two relays and second in another relay and third in the fourth relay in which she competed. So we are really proud to claim Mela as a hometown young lady. Uh, I, we hope to see her continue with her swimming career, but she also is outstanding academically and happens to be a competition cheerleader for Mary Person. So, her dad said the family will support her whatever she wants to do and and we're all waiting to see what she'll do next. Well, there's been a lot of talk about fake news lately and the reporter wants to get in on the fun. We will be featuring one fake news story in every week's broadcast, but it's up to you viewers to figure out which one is the fake story. So as you watch the video unfold, see if you could pick out which fake story is fake and then comment in the comments below and we'll see who wins. Thanks for watching The Reporter and watch out for that fake news. Well, we've all been frustrated by our water bill from time to time, I suppose, but a Pea Ridge Road man took it to a new level last week and wound up in the Monroe County Jail. His name is John Bernie Prince and he went to the county administrative offices with a check. He had to pay a water bill of over $500 at his Pea Ridge Road home. Mr. Prince expressed his unhappiness and uh, a clerk accused him of cussing at her and even tossing a lock removed from the water meter at his home at her. He was later accosted by County Code Enforcement Officer Jeff Wilson, who ended up taking out warrants for dis damage to property as well as simple assault. Mr. Prince was checked into the Monroe County Jail on Monday. See more details in this week's report. Well, you may have noticed traffic was a little heavier than normal in Forsyth this week as they do road construction, but the reporter has learned the reason why. It seems that the Six Flags Corporation is planning to build its next big park in Forsyth, right there on Highway 41 at the former home of the Senior Center next to the Monroe County Fine Arts Auditorium. Yes, big breaking news for Forsyth. It'll feature the Fox City Roller Coaster as well as the Tiff College Fun Wheel. There will even be a Greg Tapley Barrel Roll in this new park. Very exciting news. Stay tuned for more details in this week's Reporter. In sports, Monroe County sports heating back up as the kids are back in school. Mary Persons senior Eric Snow has made a commitment to play college baseball at South Florida. 
with the Bulls. Uh, Eric, of course, batted over 500 last year and set a national record for triples in a season with 18. He said he chose South Florida because they finished 20th in the country last year, including big postseason wins over Florida and Miami. Find out more about Snow's college path. And also, another Monroe County native, Austin Cox, making uh, waves as a minor league baseball player. He was named the Player of the Week by the Kansas City Royals with their double-A team in Arkansas. Find out more details. And plus, help the reporter get ready for our big preseason football preview. Uh, the boys have been practicing hard. Okay. And, um, you know, I like, the, I like the vibe of this team so far, you know. And we've, had, we've put some good practices together. So, we're just young, you know. We've still got a lot of young kids playing, not many seniors. And um, I think the key is we've gotten better every day we've been out here practicing. Uh, even if it's just a little bit better, we've gotten better. So um, I think we've got a good group, and, and um, you know we'll see where it's at. Just a little young this year, but um, but excited to see see these guys and how they perform. You know when we get into playing games and stuff. So the pigskin preview comes out August 18th. If you want to be a part, call the reporter office 994-2358 as we salute our cheerleaders, band members, and football players for the Bulldogs. Welcome to Baby's Daddy's Kitchen, and we're cooking with Corona. In the pandemic, we need vitamins to fight off the virus. And what better way to get vitamins? Through fruit. What better way to get fruit? Through fruit loops. And then you add you a little bit of the strawberry banana milk. Fruit's in it, and you throw in a little banana, and there you go. Mm, mm, mm. And not only is it good and rich in vitamins, it's also diversified.